this video, we're going to look at an extension of our Lewis dot structure theory to look at electron groups, the shape of a molecule, the actual shape of a molecule, and its polarity based on its shape. So to start with, we're going to look at a water molecule. Now, if you buy molecular modeling kits, they typically come like this. And you read the instructions, it says for an oxygen atom, you use the red sphere, and for a hydrogen atom, you use the white spheres. So whereas elements in reality don't have any color, there's typically common coloring schemes used for the molecules that you buy in a kit. When you make them, you notice it has this bench structure, where although the three atoms tend to be on a plane, they're not on a line. So they're in a plane, but not on a line. So to go from this apparently linear structure to the actual bent shape that we have here, we have to look at electron groups. Electron groups are clusters of electrons around the central atom. So if we look at a water molecule here, I have four electron groups. Four because I have a lone pair above and below, that's two, and a bonding pair left and right, so that's an extra two, so I have four different clusters of electrons. Whenever you have four electron groups, the structure is always tetrahedral. The structure and the shape are different for historical reasons, but whenever you have four electron groups, the structure is always tetrahedral, because tetra means four. A tetrahedron is drawn counterclockwise, or at least I recommend that you draw it counterclockwise, and it's a line, line, wedge, and dash, where the line and the line are in the plane of the board, but the wedge is perspective coming towards you, and the dash is perspective going away from you. So if you can imagine a tripod, a camera stand, if you like, a tripod type situation, um, that's what a tetrahedron would look like. In fact, here's a tetrahedron here. This is a structure we'll look at soon, but not quite yet. So it's a tripod. You can have any three atoms in a plane, um, but you can't have all four atoms in a plane. And if you were to sit it on its three legs here, or sit it on those three legs, or on those three legs, it would always end up looking the same. So we'll return to this tetrahedron in a, in a later video. So let's now take our scaffold and let's inlay the oxygen and two hydrogens. So we clearly have an oxygen in the middle and I've got two hydrogens. I'm gonna arbitrarily pick the two lines to put them on so I can get rid of the wedge and the dash. I don't have extra wedges and dashes, I just have lone pairs, right? I only have two lone pairs. So you can clearly see where the bent shape came from the tetrahedral structure. So this shape is called bent. I'll put the shape in parentheses, whereas the structure is not in parentheses. Polarity refers to differences in the ends of the molecule. So just as the Earth has poles, the North and the South Pole have different effects on a compass, for example, or a bar magnet has a North and a South Pole because its two ends have different effects on metal or a compass, as, as another example. We ask ourselves, does a water molecule have two different ends? Well, the answer is yes, because it clearly has a hydrogen end, you know, if I lay it on my arm, the oxygen's not even touching me. This is the hydrogen end. And then it clearly has an oxygen end. And they're different, the oxygen end, the hydrogen end. So does a water molecule have two different ends? Yes. If you have two different ends, then you are polar. Now, there is another check that we have to check for polarity, um, you must contain at least one polar bond. 
And if you do, then you have to contain a net polar bond. But we can come back and look at that in a subsequent video. For now, we'll just look at differences in ends. But again, please make a note to come back and look at another video on net polarity. Let's look at an ammonia molecule. So ammonia, if you look at the molecular kit instructions, nitrogen is blue. So we have um, a blue nitrogen and we have three peripheral hydrogens. Notice that if we look at any three atoms, they're in a plane, but the fourth atom is not in the plane. So this is a three-dimensional structure. It doesn't sit flat. If I hold it just right, you can see that there's daylight. Maybe a bit, a little tall to show, but there's daylight between the three hydrogens, or or rather, the nitrogen sits off the plane of the three hydrogens. Okay, so how would we call this? Well, there are four electron groups. There are three lines and a lone pair. That's four separate groups of electrons. And four is always a tetrahedral structure. So let's draw the tetrahedral structure. We draw a line, line, wedge, dash. I recommend you do this counterclockwise. Line, line, wedge, dash. Incidentally, I've just realized we never commented on the bond angle. Let's say the bond angle is approximately 109.5 anytime you have tetrahedral. In fact, it's exactly 109.5 for a tetrahedron. There's a slight change because we have this bent structure, but that's not something that I recommend you worry about at this stage. So tetrahedron, we have 109.5 degree bond angle. Let's put the nitrogen right in the middle. And let's put the hydrogens arbitrarily in three of the four spots. And the fourth spot is not occupied by an element, it's occupied by a lone pair. So you can clearly see the origin of our, uh, of our shape here. So what would you call this? Well, it looks like a three-sided pyramid. Looks like a three-sided pyramid. So we'll call it trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal. So we've gone from four electron groups to a tetrahedral structure, now to a trigonal pyramidal shape. Let's look if it has different ends. Well, similar to the argument for water, it definitely has a blue nitrogen end. And it has a white hydrogen end. It has two ends. A pyramid has a peak and a base. So yes, it does. So therefore, it's polar. Again, I'll refer you to a later video where we'll look in a bit more detail about a net, polar, uh, net polarity and about what polarity means. For now, I think the label suffices. To go from ammonia to ammonium, I've got to cast off these electrons and attack uh, a proximal hydrogen, which basically means you add an extra bond to hydrogen. So we take our ammonia with its vacant space here for it, that's currently being occupied by a lone pair, we put an extra hydrogen in. So now we've got a nice tetrahedral structure. Four electron groups. Here I've got a bonding pair rather than a lone pair. And I know four electron groups gives me a tetrahedral shape. Sorry. Four electron groups give me a tetrahedral structure. And a tetrahedral structure has a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. So I draw my tetrahedral structure as so. And in the center, I put my 
central atom, which is nitrogen again. And now I surround it with peripheral hydrogens. I know my plus charges on nitrogen according to Lewis dot theory. So I'm done. Now, I notice that this actually looks like the structure. The actual shape looks exactly like the structure. So on this occasion, the structure and the shape have the same meaning. They're both tetrahedral. Is it polar? Well, on this occasion, no. I can set it down that way. But if I rotate it, it looks exactly the same. If I were to be struck by this object, I'd be struck by a hydrogen exclusively. She can't be struck by the central nitrogen. It's, it's concealed. So this looks the same regardless of how um, it would strike an object or an object would encounter this. It would always look the same. So this has no polarity. It's non-polar. Before concluding this video, let's look at the presence or absence of dots on the central atom. Notice when water had dots on the central atom, the structure and the shape were different. Notice when ammonia had dots on the central atom, the structure and the shape were different. Notice ammonium has no dots on the central atom, the structure and the shape are the same. This is a rule and this is something that you should look out for.